it. Okay. So people are coming in. A little bit of housekeeping before we start. Uh, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat. If they're time sensitive, I'll read them. I'll, I'll interrupt uh, Brooke and I'll read them to her. And at the end, we always have time for, for other questions. So feel free to save that for the end. And once uh, Brooke opens the, the, the floor to questions, you, you can unmute yourself and ask, or again, put them in the chat and I'll, I'll read them out loud. And with further ado, um, thank you, Brooke, for, for being here with us and the floor is yours, thanks. Cool. Uh, so I'm Brooke Stroder. So I actually work at the library at the Robert Cunn branch. I'm a library clerk, but I have a very like deep like appreciation for tarot and astrology. So I first started practicing astrology probably when I was like six, seven years old. My mom, she had a ton of astrology books in the house and we would use it to talk about pop culture like different celebrity signs and understanding why they acted the way they did and also like understanding ourselves like what traits do we relate to according to our astrology signs and so that's how I started with astrology and it's just continued and growed over the years especially in adulthood and with tarot I first got into tarot around 2019 after I graduated from college I graduated with my bachelor's in psych and so I have I like understanding the human psyche and understanding why people make the decisions that they do, why people think the way they do. And I find that tarot and astrology are really great tools to understand myself and other people. And so with that, I'm going to start the presentation. Cool. So the class today is specifically about applying astrology to tarot. So I wanted to focus on this because I learned astrology first before I knew tarot. And I find that astrology is a bit more common in pop culture. And so you might be more attuned to some of the terms associated with astrology than in tarot. So I find that it's a nice transition tool to kind of learn tarot through an astrological lens. So just going through the basics, uh, tarot is a card deck that contains 78 cards, each with detailed imagery. And so the deck can be divided into two sections. There's the major arcana and the minor arcana. And so major arcana cards, there's 22 of them in a deck. They represent sig significant themes and events. Well, minor arcana cards represent more like mundane everyday events and circumstances. I'm sorry, uh, Brooke, uh, yeah. a person requested you, I think but you're by yourself, if you can remove your mask so they hear you a little bit better. Oh, uh, sure. Thank you. Is that better sound wise? I hear you pretty well. Let me see. I don't see any complaints. Yeah, oh, thanks. Okay. Cool. And then for astrology, astrology is the study of the planets and stars rooted in the belief that they impact everyday life. So there are 12 zodiac signs used in traditional Western astrology, and I listed each sign below. And then every person is born with like each planet located within a different constellation. So when someone says that their sun is in cancer, it's they're saying that when they were born, the sun is located within the constellation of cancer. And that doesn't change. Like throughout your life, you'll always have your sun in cancer or whatever. Oh, hi. Hi. Great. Okay. We just got an in person of patron. And so, yeah. So, so the program, yeah, the program is hybrid, uh, and Brooke is in a room. She just put on her mask because uh, another person is joining her. Yeah, uh, so I'll try to speak up louder if that's better. Okay. And then with tarot and astrology, they're related because they're both used for divination purposes. So divination is the belief that there is an energy outside of ourselves 
that affects our lives, that affects the direction of our lives. And so both tarot and astrology can be used for divination. Uh, they both represent archetypes of the human condition. It's a reflection of our environment, of the people that we interact with every day, and some of the like most common like behaviors and traits uh, amongst you know people. Sorry, are you speaking to? Are you the teacher? Yeah. And there are other classmates. Yeah, they're on Zoom. Oh, okay. Do you want to sit here and face it this way, so oh, then you can look at the I someone else is coming. Oh, um, no. It's your preference. Okay. That's okay. Because yeah. then it's okay. It's oh. okay. I'm just you're looking at Oh, yeah. I'll okay. adjust. Okay. Sorry. No, no worries. Oh. Sorry, I'm late. I went to the other. Oh, oh, that's fine. And so with astrology and the major arcana cards. So for each major arcana card, there's 22 there corresponds to an astrological sign or with a planet. And many of the major arcana cards have a planetary symbol located within the card. And I will try to point them out as I show them to you. You have a deck with you? Uh, I have a deck in my purse, but most of the images are on the screen. And so for uh, the sign of Aries, which is represented by the ram, it is associated with the emperor. And so if you notice on the top corners of the throne and by the emperor's knees, you'll see the ram located on the chair. And so the reason why they're paired together is because they're both associated with authority, power, and leadership. And so Aries, they're known for taking the lead uh, taking initiative and creating their own plans when they feel called to. And so that is the same traits that are uh, used by the emperor. And so that's why they are paired together. And then the next sign, Taurus. Taurus is associated with the hierophant. And the reason why they're paired together is because of tradition. So with the hierophant, the hierophant represents tradition, uh, religion, spirituality, and the structures that uh, they find foundational to society. And so Tauruses, they're known for preferring stability and structure and kind of maintaining the status quo. So that's why those two car, uh, Taurus and the Hierophant are paired together. Then we have Gemini, the twins paired with the lovers. And so as you can see, their common theme is duality. And so it's about recognizing like two, two parts create the whole. And so uh, oftentimes people interpret the lovers as like a soulmate pairing, but the lovers can also represent uh, duality within yourself. And then once you combine those two halves into a whole, then you'll feel complete and feel a sense of wholeness. Then you have Cancer with the Chariot card. So if you notice on the soldier's shoulders, you'll see two like moon crescents. Cancer is ruled by the moon. So that's another like symbolism showing how they're paired together. Cancers are very tenacious. And once they feel emotionally pulled to something, they will pursue it in full speed. And I find that that is the same energy represented in the chariot card. It's about, you know, fighting for something that you feel very passionate about, that you care deeply about, pulling ahead full speed to, uh, to gain that. Then we have Leo and the strength card. They're both associated with confidence. This one's pretty uh, simple to pair together. Leo is represented by the lion. There is a lion in the strength card. And it's really about finding your inner confidence. The strength card represents uh, finding your inner confidence within yourself. And despite any like pushback or conflict that you might have with other people, Leo has that same energy. They believe in themselves because they know that if they don't, 
who else will? Let me tell you Oh, uh, you can take your mask off if you want to. I'll keep mine on, but you can take well, yours off. I'll, I'll leave mine on. Okay. And then with Virgo, it's paired with the Hermit card, and the common theme is solitude. So the Hermit, uh, they are going on a journey to discover kind of like their true path. And so they have to take that journey alone. This is paired with Virgo because Virgo, the maiden, they often go into very deep analytical thought. They like delving really deep into whatever tasks that they have to accomplish. And so a lot of times when they dive deep, that is a journey that they take independently and without influence from other people. Then we have Libra paired with the justice card. If you can see in the judge's left hand, they have a pair of scales in their hand. And so this card is about balance. So with the justice card, it's about restoring equity within whatever system or whatever situation. With Libras, they often tend to, uh, they don't make, decisions unless they feel that they're making a decision that is equitable to all parties and they're doing the right thing. And so again, it's about finding that balance between what is right and what would be good for all parties involved. And then we have Scorpio paired with the death card. Common theme is inevitable change. I learned that Scorpios, Scorpions, they molt their exoskeleton about five or six times before they're fully mature. So they are constantly going through changes within their body in order to become their fully realized self. And so that's the change that's associated with the death card is that some things have to end in order to create, to gain something new. One moment. I'm sorry. I, I have no idea what this was even here. It's okay. Sorry. It's okay. And then the next card we have is the Temperance card paired with Sagittarius. So as you can see, they're both like half human, half creature. And so the common theme is patience. So with the Temperance card, it's about achieving prosperity and peace. Uh, through patience and balance and faith. And with Sagittarius's, they are often motivated to explore the world and to take on every opportunity that they can so that they can create their own moral philosophy that will lead them to peace. And then we have Capricorn paired with the double card. So as you can see, the double card has horns at top of the head, similar to the goat. And so the common theme is temptation and vices. So with Capricorn energy, Capricorns, they're very goal oriented and are willing to achieve their goals kind of by any means necessary. And that can be both a positive and a negative thing. And so, but it's paired with the double card because it just represents that there can be too much of a good thing and that anything that is in excess can have negative impacts. So even like working hard, working to the bone, that in excess, it can be unhealthy for you. Then you have the Aquarius paired with the star card. So they are both water bearers. They're both pouring back into their environment. And so with the star card, again, it's about achieving like prosperity and peace through hope and a better future. And so when you have hope, you're able to pour back into your community. Aquarius follows that same philosophy. They have a hope that they can create like a more idyllic uh, community and they're willing to pour in their own resources and create new ideas to achieve that ideal. And then with the last sign in the zodiac Pisces, it's paired with the moon. And so the moon card is associated with illusions and things not being very clear. And with Pisces, a lot of Pisces energy uh, can be associated with 
evasion, like when you try to catch a fish, you can't grab onto it. It's going to swim away because they don't want to be caught. And so it's kind of that similar energy of kind of going through hurdles, not things being, things not being as clear as they could be. Things are like hidden or unseen. So I created a little chart, if you were to look back at the presentation, that just pairs each zodiac sign with the major arcana card they're associated with. And then the rest of the major arcana cards, they're paired with a planet. So with the full card, it's paired with Uranus. With the magician, it's paired with Mercury. The high priestess is paired with the moon. The empress is paired with Venus. Jupiter is paired with the wheel of fortune. The hangman is paired with Neptune. The tower is paired with Mars. The sun is with the sun. The judgment card is paired with Pluto and the world is paired with Saturn. So those are all of the major arcana cards in a tarot deck and their affiliated astrological sign or planet. So did anyone have any questions about the major arcana cards? Is, is this a, a model that you developed? Mm -mm. This is uh, the recognized kind of like associations uh, that cool. most astrologers use. So then we're gonna move on to the astrology and minor arcana cards. So with the minor arcana cards, there's four suits. There are the cups or chalices. There are the pentacles, the swords, and wands. Similarly, in astrology, there are four elements. There's fire, air, earth, and water. And so cups represents water or they equate to water. Pentacles equates to earth. Swords equate to the element of air and wands equate to the element of fire. And then in minor arcana cards, each suit, they go from the ace card, cards two through 10, and then they have four court cards, the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. So ace cards always represent new beginnings related to their suit. So with the ace of cups, it's like a new emotional connection, a new relationship. With the Ace of Pentacles, it's about like a new financial opportunity. With the Ace of Swords, it's like a new idea, new inspiration. And then the Ace of Wands is a new passion. Then cards two, three, and four are considered cardinal cards. So cards that represent like initiation or uh, what do you call it? Like the starting point, the like call to action, so to speak. Cards five, six, and seven are fixed signs. So those cards are more about maintaining and sustaining rather than creating something new. And then cards eight, nine, and 10 are mutable cards, are cards that represent change and transition. And then with the court cards, they reflect the various levels of mastery and development of the skills rated with a suit. So page cards are usually like beginners. They don't have a lot of like experience, but they're they're excited to start something new. Knights are about people pursuing the skill of whatever suit. Queens are, they have mastered the skill and they're ready to like exchange it with their community. And kings are people have mastered the skill and they're, what people like look up to as like an example. So in astrology, uh, you would categorize each sign by their element, which is at the top, and then their modality, which is on the side. So if someone's like, I am a fixed earth sign, you would look where it's fixed, and you would look at the earth column, and then you would get Taurus. So Taurus is a fixed earth sign, or if someone's like, I'm a cardinal air, you look at the cardinal row, you look at the air column, and you would get Libra. And so, mm -hmm. could you 
remind me what cardinal is? I'm sorry. Yeah, so cardinal is like the, uh, let me call it. Animals. Yeah, the catalyst. It's like that catalyzing okay, energy. And so these are how each sign is like categorized based on their element and modality. And then if we change the terminology, so instead of the elements, we oh. use the suits. And instead of the modalities, we use the like numbers. You'll get this chart. So the zodiac signs in the center have not changed, but now we're using the terms used in tarot. And so if we're looking at Taurus, instead of saying they're a fixed earth sign, you would say that the five, six, or seven of pentacles represents Taurus. Or if you're looking at what cards represent Pisces, mm -hmm. you would look at the eight, nine, or 10 of cups and so so let's say you draw like in the morning a one card thing and you get like the three of pentacles that could mean a capricorn is coming in is involved in that situation yeah or the energy associated with that sign gotcha. all right um why is, why is libra's associated with sword because isn't it's libra airs. kind of fairy but sword is kind of a cutting through ideas ideas yeah so can I, I whoever it? the last comment we could not hear it if you can repeat uh, it you could hear it. oh uh they're just asking about how a libra how is it associated with swords because when you imagine swords you think about it like slicing and like cutting through things while like air signs are a bit more like flighty and so the way i think about swords is that through the cutting motion you are moving the air and so it's causing a change which is through the air which represents the air signs because air signs are like always moving they're always going like a different direction that's fascinating and then I think Brooke disconnected herself. I'm going to see if she can reconnect. Just a minute. We had a minor technical issue. We'll be with you in a sec. Just a sec. Just so you know, um, many of the things that she's talking about, uh, the about the the um, cards and the symbol, the signs uh, she mentioned in the other two presentations, and you can access those through the EPL YouTube channel. Uh, so you can listen to that and learn more about that. And also she's here often here at the Robert Crown Branch. So if you have any particular questions, you're more than welcome to come over and, and ask her if you need any of the things that she's presenting. I'm sure she would be fine with us sharing her presentation. So, because I see uh, some of the terms are, for those of us who are, not even at the intro level are a little bit complex to understand, even though if this is an intro level, but um, she's more than happy to to share that with you guys. Okay.
Rick. Okay, Rick. So again, very left off. This is the like cheat sheet to see which uh, minor major kind of cards are associated with what sign planet. Okay, this one died. And then this is the chart for the minor arcana. So again, at the top are the suits that are used in tarot. And then on the left hand yeah, side are the uh, various uh, like triplets, I would say, for numbers. So again, two, three, four is for cardinal signs, five, six, seven is for fixed signs, eight, nine, ten is for mutable signs. So uh, for the rest of the talk, I'm going to be going through examples of how to do card spreads, tarot card spreads how to like look at each card, look at the imagery, look at the symbol symbolism and think about the astrology of that card to build that interpretation. And so with a tarot card spread, you can ask as many questions and you can ask like any type of question that you'd like. I would say for beginners, it's easier to only interpret one or two cards per question and then you can ask as many questions as you'd like. But the whole point of a tarot card spread is to create a story. And so if you're still trying to learn how to interpret the cards, having too many cards in a spread can just complicate things and you won't really get to the depth of the questions that you're asking. And so the first example I have is using a general advice spread. So I just made this up, but it's like three general questions. One, what is the current energy? Two, why do I feel this way? Where's this energy coming from? And three, what advice do I need? So let's say that you're doing your tarot spread. You ask, what is the current energy? And you get the 10 of swords. You can just look at the card and see that it's not a positive card. That's <laughs> not good. <laughs> you see that the person's like stabbed in the back. They're just over it. So when you think about uh, swords, you're thinking about air. So it's really about a mental fatigue, a mental exhaustion. And so uh, thinking back to that chart, let's go back. So we're looking at a 10. So it's mutable energy and it's swords. So it's relating to Gemini. So if you are familiar with like your birth chart or with certain signs in your chart, then you would look to see like where you have Gemini energy in oh, your chart. Okay. Huh. And so that would kind of explain like where you're feeling that fatigue. So like, for example, for me, I'm a Gemini sun, I'm Gemini mm -hmm. moon. So if I were to get the 10 of swords, I would be very, I would think that it has to do with my like emotions and my identity that I'm feeling fatigued about things relating to my identity and my emotions. And so that's the first card. Then the second question I would ask, why do I feel this way? So you get the five <laughs> of pentacles. You've been cast out. <laughs> <laughs> so as you see, there's two individuals. They're walking in the snow. I don't think that they look adequately dressed for the weather. They seem like they're suffering. But one thing that's interesting is if you look at the card, they're walking right past what I presume to be a church based right. on the glass staining. Churches are known to be a place of shelter, but they're walking right past it because they are just in the mindset of right. like, I am not in a good place. So if I were to, um, the general association with the five of pentacles is a scarcity mindset. And so it's less about not having the resources. It's not believing that you have access to resources and constantly thinking about what you don't have. And having that mindset kind of like perpetuates your ability to not get resources. Mm -hmm. And so if we take it from a astrological lens, the five, I can go back to the chart again. Five is associated with fixed signs. Pentacles is earth. So five of pentacles is for Taurus. So Tauruses, what do they like? They like stability. They like maintaining their status quo. And so when they are in this scarcity mindset, it's because they feel like they're not 
achieving their status quo. And so they're constantly trying to figure out how to get back. And so if I were interpreting this in a, in a spread, why do I feel this way? It's because I feel like I'm lacking something in my life. I feel, like, feel like, I'm sorry, what? Like I'm lacking something in my life that I'm just not doing enough. I don't have enough. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. That's kind of the energy associated with the five of pentacles. So you're not looking at your chart and seeing where you might have Taurus, or if you, you know, if you don't have Taurus in your chart, you're just looking at like what, what that card would traditionally mean. Yeah. And so if you do know your chart, then you, you could look at what area like Taurus rules. And so like for some people, it could be related into career. Uh, for some people, it could be relating to love. For some people, it could be relating to family. Again, you'd have to look at your own specific chart, but you could use that to like enhance your own personal reading. Mm -hmm. And then the third question is, what advice do I need? So you pulled the magician card. So if you look at the card, it has all four uh, symbols of the suits on the table. They have a cup, they have a pentacle, they have a sword, they have a wand. And so with the magician, it's associated with manifestation because they have all of the tools to create the reality that they want. And so the magician card is also associated with Mercury because Mercury has to do with communication, has to do with your thought process. And so if I were to interpret this as an advice card, it's telling you to use your, use the way you think, shift it into a more positive manner steer away from that scarcity mindset from the five of pentacles and try to think about what you want to manifest in your life, what you want to create. And so then when you get the full picture, you have someone who's just really like, lack of a word, like down in the dumps. Like they're just really sad. They're just mentally exhausted. They're exhausted because they're constantly thinking about what they don't have in their life and they're not thinking about what they could bring in their life. So the advice is think about what you can manifest and bring in versus on what you don't have. So that is how like a three card like tarot spread would go. And so then- Will we have access to this presentation? Yeah, it'll be posted on the website, on the YouTube page. And so then I have another example for like a career spread, like if you specifically want to know about mm -hmm. what's going on in your career. So some questions you could ask is like your past circumstance, what's your current situation and what's your future outcome? So let's say you ask, what was my past circumstance? You pull the page of swords. So the page of swords is someone who's a beginner, they're really excited to take on like a new project, new idea, but they don't have the skills to do it. Because it's swords, it's relating to like inspiration and again, mental energy. So when it's associated with, uh, and swords are related to air signs. So in a career reading, you can interpret this as like maybe starting a new position or having a new role and you're really excited to get started. You don't know too much about it, but you're just excited to like get your foot in the door. So then you ask, what's the current situation? Ooh. You get the tower reversed. But it's reversed. Yeah. So with reverse cards, it's still the theme of the card if it were upright, but I find that it's just like in a different stage of that situation. And so with the tower card specifically, if it were upright, it represents a destructive change. Whether it's upright or reverse, the tower will always represent a disruptive change in your life. With the reverse tower, it's a disruptive change that you're not willing to let in your life. You're being very resistant to that change. You're pushing against that change. You don't want it to happen. You're doing what you can to not have it happen, but it's going to happen anyway. It's the tower. It's going to happen. It's just going to be more painful because you're not letting it happen. So if that's your current situation, it's not a yeah, happy just, outcome. Just quit the job. And so 
sometimes when you're doing a tarot card reading, you might ask, uh, I need more clarification. That card, it doesn't make sense to me. Recording in progress. And so um, you'll uh, ask a second, you ask for a second card, a clarifying card. It's like the language used. Hmm. And so then you ask, hey, can I get a clarifying card for the tower? You get the seven of wands. So sevens represent fixed energy. The wands represent uh, fire. So fixed fire is Leo. Leos are, they are very protective of their ideas. They, are, they will fight for their ideas even when no one else believes in them. They are their own biggest cheerleader. So if you look at the card, you see that this person is fighting off like six other wands below them because they're trying to defend uh, defend themselves, defend their ideas, defend their passion. And so when it's paired with the tower, it represents uh, a disruptive change that you're reluctant to like experience and you're trying to defend your passion, your idea by any means necessary, regardless of how uh, painful or difficult it may be. And so, yeah, I don't like it on me. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and so, um, in a career setting, uh, this could represent maybe there's like a project that you're on like the chopping block for or there's something that the your job doesn't support but you feel very passionate about it and so you're trying to convince everyone like this is why you should keep my idea or this is why you should keep my project or whatever it may be with the tower reverse it's most likely not gonna happen but you feel so strongly about keeping whatever it is relating to your career that you're just gonna fight for it regardless. So then you pull a third card, what's the future outcome? And so, oh, let me- Queen of- Queen of Wands. Wands. And so with the Queen of Wands, uh, wands again represents passion and with the queen of wands it represents someone who has really mastered how to utilize their passion to their benefit and has exuded confidence and people look forward to working with them because of that so in a career reading you would interpret that as like oh this is someone that oh i want to work with them because they can like advocate for themselves they can get the like job done in terms of like communicating with people, convincing people to join their project. So within this entire spread, you have someone who was at first really excited to like join in whatever group company. They're in a situation to where whatever idea that they had is not being supported, is not being like recognized. It's causing a really negative experience at work but that person is still trying to fight for it. And so while that project might not like work out, it's still like the company could still reject or whatever, people will still recognize that person as being tenacious. Like they fought for that project. And so in something new in a new project, people will look towards that person like, oh, okay, I wanna work with them because at least that they care about what they're talking about. They're not like passive, they're really engaged. So that's another example of a card spread, specifically a career spread. Again, you can ask any question that you want uh, relating to what you want to talk about. And if you need, and then if you need more clarification, you can always ask for like a second card. And then my last example is about love. So many people use tarot and astrology for love but I do want to make something like very clear when you're talking about love or relationships or anything that involves another person you're not supposed to ask questions that tap into someone else's 
energy into someone's psyche, you're really supposed to ask about yourself and like what you can do because you're the one who's choosing to do the tarot card spread. The other person, if they don't know about it, you shouldn't be doing any like divination on them. You should always have someone's consent. And so with this spread, I focus on like manifesting love. So it's about <laughs> what you can do versus like what someone else is doing. So three questions I came up with, what energy do I need to attract for connection? What energy do I need to release? And what is out there for me if I make those changes? So let's say, what do I need to attract in my life for connection? You get the star card. The star card, it has to do with hope and, you know, creating a, you know, ideal environment where you're actively pouring into that environment. The star card is associated with Aquarius. So it really is about creating, being an active participant in like the world that you want to create. Having, setting your own standards and then actively working towards them so other can like recognize that and like want to join, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so that's the energy that you want to bring into your life. Then you might ask, what do I need to release? So then you get the two of swords. You see someone tied up, they're holding two swords in their hands and they're not, they're just sitting there. They're not looking like they're going to make any movement, right? So the two is associated with cardinal energy and swords are associated with air. So the two of swords is associated with Libra. Libras, they are, they're ruled by Venus. So they care a lot about connection and relationships. And so again, with Libras, they're also represented by the skill. They like balance, they like making the right decision. So if they don't feel like they're making like the best decision that benefits everyone, sometimes they don't make any decisions at all, which we know in life, sometimes you just have to act. You can't always make the perfect decision. You just have to make a decision in the moment. So this card is telling you to release this passive like energy where you're just sitting there kind of like waiting for an answer to come to you. It's kind of telling you, you're gonna have to take action. You're gonna have to make choices, even if you don't feel like they're hundred percent perfect, you still have to act because life is moving on without you, you know? And then the outcome. Let's say you get two cards, they like pop out at once. You get the Knight of Cups and you get the Nine of Pentacles. So the Knight of Cups, Cups again has to do with water, has to do with connection and like emotion and emotions. So the Knight of Cups represents someone who's pursuing their emotions and is trying to, you know, bring that, share that energy with other people and share that emotional energy on their journey. So if you get the Knight of Cups, when you're talking about a love reading, that means that they're, well, it depends. It can either represent someone else who is ready to be on a emotional journey, a more long-term journey, or you could be the Knight of Cups. You could be the one who's ready to put yourself out there and to pursue your emotions. It really depends on uh, what energy you connect with. Some people connect with certain cards more than others. You'll have to just work with your tarot card deck to figure that out. And then it's paired with the nine of pentacles. So the nine is associated with mutable energy. Pentacles are associated with earth. So a mutable earth sign is Virgo. Virgos, they like working. They kind of like go deep dive into whatever project or tasks that they work on. And the nine of pentacles specifically has to do with like being rewarded. You're reaping the fruits of your labor. And so again, in a love reading, the nine of pentacles would represent, you put all of this hard work to bring this energy into your life, to bring love into your life and you will be rewarded for it. And so the nine of cups of the nine of pentacles, I think would represent like, you have achieved manifesting love, which is the whole point. I would be happy with this, you know, spread if I got this like in real life. But yeah, that's <laughs> kind of like how you um create like a story. The cards, they all like relate to each other. You can look um in your chart to see with cups represents water. So if you're 
a Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. Maybe you connect more with the Knight of Cups. Maybe the person that, maybe you meet someone who has those placements. And it's like, oh, maybe you're the Knight of Cups. You know, you'll find out with time. But yeah, you kind of take uh, the different symbolism in the cards. You see if they relate to you astrologically, if you relate to the themes they're associated with in tarot, and you, um, you kind of craft your interpretations from there. So those are the examples of the card spreads. And then I wanted to recommend some stores where you can buy tarot cards. Okay. So, the beginning, huh? Yeah. So I found that at most bookstores, they have a divination section or metaphysical section, and you can almost always find tarot card decks because it's a really popular, it's a growing popular interest that people have. And so that's located in Evanston. And then there's the Molly Way Brothers Charm Spells and Potion Shop. That's in Rogers Park. And so I checked out their website and literally right on their like front page is a picture of like a table of tarot card decks. Mm -hmm. And you can get like candles and any other like metaphysical uh, tools that you could be interested in. And then the last store is Alchemy Arts. This is located in Edgewater. And one thing that's really interesting about this shop, they actually have tarot study groups. So they have an in-person group and a virtual group where people from all like skill levels can uh, talk about tarot and talk about different decks, interpret the cards or how they like, I don't know, understand the cards. Sounds really cool. Oh, you, oh, you don't do that? Mm -mm. I just found about it like a couple of days ago, but I yeah. thought it was really cool. And so you want to check out their website to see when those events are. I think the ones in June have passed, but they haven't put up their uh, July schedule yet. So I've checked that out. And then these are some of the media I use to understand here on astrology. So if you're really interested in learning about the minor arcana cards in their associations with astrology, I would read 36 Secrets by Susan T. Chang. It's like one of the best books I've ever read. Like it goes so in depth about how the astrology signs relate to each card in the minor arcana. So like I group them based on threes, like two, three, four, five, six, seven. It goes in depth for like each card. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. And then these are just a list of podcasts that I listen to on like a weekly basis that have deepened my understanding of tarot and astrology. So I would check those out as well. And then, yep, I just have sources. So did anyone have any questions about like anything I talked about? Can you explain mutable? I would say mutable being you know, uh, in terms of the, yeah. So with mutable energy, it's, I would say the best adjective is like adaptable. Mm. They're always ready to like shift and change, and change. with whatever circumstances <laughs> that yeah. they're uh, faced with. And so the mutable signs are Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. And so those signs are just much more ready to like leave situations to join something new or they're kind of ready to like they don't get like stuck like fixed signs like they don't like leaving things they like staying where they are because they are familiar with their environment mutable signs they're a bit more okay with like letting things go bringing new energy in so and cardinal signs are like want to get things started right yeah and so yeah i <laughs> I have a question. Um, I tried to put it in the chat and I couldn't do it. But can you describe what a pentacle is? Sure. So thank you. So if you look at the last card on the right, it is the circle with the star, the pentagram inside. So they represent coins or like golden, a golden like source of like currency and so it's associated with the like material possessions and like things in like the very physical realm uh emotions 
aren't tangible. Like your thoughts and thought process, those aren't tangible. Your passion isn't tangible. A uh, pentacle is a very like tangible, like it represents like with your material house. things. Yeah, like your possessions or. I never you know, thought of that way. Cool. Yeah, yeah, things of that nature. So when uh, you ever get a pentacle um, in a tarot card spread, it's usually a lot of people associate it with like money or business or career, but it can be really anything that is of the physical realm. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, well, is this the deck that you used? So these this are is traditional. This is the writer deck, but is yeah. this the deck you use? So I use the modern witch tarot deck. I actually got it from like Barnes and Noble. It was the first uh, second deck I've ever gotten. And so it's very similar imagery, but what they do is that they try to have all of the figures in the cards be like femme presenting and be much more diverse, which is why I was personally drawn to the deck because I felt myself represented yeah. in the deck. So I can like connect with it more. No offense to the rhetoric deck, right, but it's right, just... Right. <laughs> Do, I don't we, really. do you ever use oracle cards? Mm -hmm. And so oracle cards, they, they're they much more loose in how they can uh, be formed. Tarot cards, they're meant to follow like the 78 card structure. Oracle cards, they are just, I don't want to say affirmations, but there can be symbols. They can be like quotes, statements, anything. Uh, that can be used to help you connect with your intuition, but it's not following any traditional like symbolism the way tarot does. And so I do have like a couple of um, Oracle decks. I'm trying to think of the name of the one I use. It's like the power of surrender Oracle deck. And so each card, it tells you like what to surrender or what to surrender to, like surrender to joy, surrender fear, like surrender uh, comparison to others. Like things like that. So, yeah. What is, well, I'll let other people ask questions if they have any questions. And, or I'll ask a question. Um, what's your daily tarot practice like? I pull, I try to pull a card a day, but my cards are, you know, I don't, I don't like the, I don't like seeing the tech, the tower. And I think so yeah. I have a different deck that's not quite so like, whoa. Mm -hmm. But so I just pull a card a day and I just say, you know, what what should I expect today? That's but I was curious, like if you have a daily thing you do or if you have any kind of practice. Yeah, so I actually do the same thing. So every morning I'll pull, I'll shuffle the cards and I'll see like what card comes out. And then I use that to get he's not hearing you. Maybe you can talk a little oh, bit sorry. And so uh, I pull a tarot card every morning. And then what I do is I journal. So I write down the date and the card I pulled. And then I just live the rest of my day. And then I'll write down anything significant that happened that day. And so then over time, if I keep pulling the same card over and over again, I can see if there's any like common event happening in my life. And so... That's every day. And then during the new moon and the full moon, I do like a whole like spread of like, what's the current energy? What's the obstacle uh, relating to the energy? Do you have any advice? What can I like do to like bring more positive energy? What can I manifest? What can I release? Questions like that associated with like what moon. The moon you're, uh, yeah. You're in. Yeah. Oh, cool. I do a lot of beginning of the year thing too for every month. Mm -hmm. It's like a pull card for every month. Yeah. And so if you guys are interested in like finding more like tarot card spreads, Google's going to be your best friend. Mm -hmm. You can look up a spread for any topic, like however, like grand or uh, general or specific. I'm sure there's a spread online that kind of like ask the questions that you're looking to be answered and I'll show you how to like format the spread so that you can better like create like a narrative. Cool. Very interesting. Yeah.
But so you will pull a card every day and you don't you just write down what the card is and then you go about your day because you kind of know that I don't yeah. really know the cards as yeah. certainly as well as you do. And then you come back at the end of the day and you're like, oh my gosh, I yeah. broke my pinky toe today. I'll put that in there. And then after a while, you'll look and say, oh, I'm always breaking a bone on you know, <laughs> whatever when I get the star or something. Yeah. Like, because I feel like that's how you get a personal connection with mm -hmm. the cards. Because the star may be something completely different to you and to me. Yeah. And then you find that, you find that pattern by doing that. So, yeah. Tarot is all about like the personal connection between yeah. you and your deck because you're trying to tap into your intuition. And so while there are the general interpretations for each card, they do, it can slightly differ person to person depending on your personality or, or what's going on in your life. And so if you build like a relationship with your tarot card deck, mm -hmm. I feel like the deck will become more accurate with time because it's like a mutual understanding of each other, right. you know? So, yeah. so even though those things are personal to you, if you're doing a reading for someone else, you're going to read it, interpret. That's the only way you know how to interpret it is how yeah. it's been for you in the mm -hmm. past. Mm -hmm. Well, I think readers gain perspective as they, as they read. Yeah. In terms of how they're, what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> Thank you very much for attending this uh, presentation, and we hope to prepare more uh, more items or more presentations that you enjoy. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, and thanks for staying through the technical difficulties. <laughs> right, bye. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.